Hi guys, Steady Eddie here, this time in Udong Thani, Thailand. It is a scorching of a day, really, really scorching hot. About 40 Celsius uh, the other day, I, I think it's probably still like that now. And um, I'm trying to film this in the shade because if I expose the camera to sunlight then it gets overheated and the filming stops. So anyway, I also, I also want to get this vlog out of the way with before Songkran starts. I mean, I, I don't want to be wandering, uh, yeah, you know, through the streets of Udon Thani, uh, talking to myself into the camera, and the next bit of big bucket of water gets thrown over me. Uh, not good. So anyway, in this video, I want to talk about traveling alone. Okay? Traveling alone, right. Now, what kind of person travels alone? And yeah, you know, is, is, is it suitable for, pe for some people or most people or a tiny minority of people? That sort of thing. Well, I've traveled alone for many, many, many years. I've been to many, many places. I've been to some wonderful, wonderful places. Southeast Asia, obviously, where I am now. I've also traveled throughout South America and the Central American uh, continent. Absolutely magnificent. I've touched on Africa, India, been many, many countries throughout Europe. So I've done, you know, lots of traveling. Uh, still lots of places I haven't been to, but I think I've done enough traveling uh, to last me a lifetime. And I've had some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experiences. I, I really, really, really don't regret any of it, you know. The memories of traveling, whether it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's in Brazil, the Amazon, uh, you, you know, climbing Chichen Itza in Mexico, you know, Machu Picchu in Peru, or, uh, you know, the battlefields of Vietnam, or Angkor Wat, and all kinds of stuff. I never regret my travel, okay? So anyway, we made that point. So, what kind of person travels alone? Well, of course, you need to be a certain type of person to travel alone. You need to be a type of person who, you know, is a bit of a loner, is happy with your own company, is confident, has an independence, uh, you know, is not afraid of the dark, uh, that sort of thing. No, that wouldn't suit everybody. I mean, if you are a person who is intrinsically sociable, uh, you have to have the company of other people with you at all times. Then travel alone certainly isn't going to suit you. It's certainly not going to suit you. Um, you do get long spells of loneliness and you've got to be prepared for that. You've got to be realistic. Now, the advantages of traveling alone are, well, the number one, the first and foremost advantage of traveling alone is that you actually go traveling. I mean, you've got nobody else to turn round to you at the last minute and say to you, look mate, you know that trip we had planned together? Well, I can't make it now, but I'll tell you what, we'll go next year. I've had that, I've had that in the past and it really, really gets me down. And that's why I decided to travel a lot. I mean, come on, let's be realistic. People, most people, they're all talk. They're all talk. In the past many years ago, I had friends who, you know, when I talked about travel, oh yeah, I want to do that, mate. If you're going to go traveling, then give me your shells. I want to come traveling with you. And then they bottle out of it. They bottle out of it because, oh, I'm not going to that country. Because I've heard rumors that it's really, really dangerous there. I'm not going there. If people are all talk. They have a change of plan. They'll talk a good talk. But when it comes down to the crunch, they'll they'll bottle out of it or of course there's also another um, there's also another scenario when they simply haven't got any money traveling you, you know uh, traveling costs money and a lot of people simply haven't got, got the dosh to travel to travel you know what I mean well to hell with other people I grew up seeing all these images of all these wonderful countries out there you know you know all of these marvelous cultures and and colorful foreign countries and, and i thought i've got to travel I, I i never went anywhere when i when i was young I, so i seen all these images of these countries and i thought i just have to do that i mean you know travel is is that's my way of making sense out of my life i need to be able to say when i get old that I've seen a bit of the world. I really, really do. And now I'm proud to say that I, that I have done. 
I mean, what really kick-started me was when the time was right, when I got to about late 30s, uh, po possibly 40 years old. That's when I thought, N you know, now's the time when I really, really, really need to fulfill my dream and start traveling. And I'm not waiting around for any bloody change your plan people. People is, get on me nerves, those change your plan people. I mean, I, I started reading The Lonely Planet and I got into it. And I thought it was fascinating, brilliantly written, The Lonely Planet. And um, I just became more and more obsessed with it. And I started, I started traveling. I started to hell with it. No different. People who, who want to travel the world, uh, you know, the, the old talk type of people, they're they deatherers. They're deatherers. They'll talk about it for years and years. And then the next thing you know, they're, they're getting married and settling down and they kind of miss the boat. Well, I'm not going to miss the boat. I, I felt that I need to travel. My life would never, ever be complete without it. And if no one else is coming along with me, then to hell with them. I'm going to do it alone. Another advantage of traveling alone is that you go to the places that you personally want to go to. You don't need to consult other people. Like, if you really want to go somewhere, then that's where you go. I'm steady enough on that one. And also, um, if you are traveling with other people, well, you go at your own pace. You travel when and, and where and uh, what, whatever you, uh, uh, you want. You don't have to consult other people. I mean, it's, it's okay to travel with other people and, uh, you know, having companionship, but your friends could turn out to be a, a real stick in the mud. They may be the type of people who just want to sit around all day and drink beer, whereas you want to get out and do things. I mean, you know, imagine going abroad with people. They want to sit around drinking beer all day. Whereas you want to go on excursions, you may end up going alone anyway because they're stuck in the bloody bars uh, all day. So, I mean, yeah, you know, that's, that's something to consider. Also, safety. Let's talk a little bit about safety, whether traveling alone or traveling uh, with, with friends. Now, it's the easiest thing in the world to say, you know, you're probably safer if you're with people when you travel. It's probably not safe to travel on your own. Are you quite sure about that? Because... I've travelled alone. I've never had any serious problems in all, all the places I've been to. Never any serious problems. Maybe because I'm a good traveller. I have a good temperament. And also I'm, re I'm respectful of people. And, um, you, you, know, you know, I know how to conduct myself in a strange fo foreign land. Now imagine the scenario when all of a sudden you start travelling with a couple of friends and one of them turns out to be a, to put it bluntly, a gobby bastard. I mean, you might be in a bar somewhere and your, your friend gets a couple of beers down, down him and the next thing he's starting mouthing off to the bar staff and the locals and, and whatever and before you know it, all hell breaks loose and you end up in a big fight and guns and knives, all kinds of bloody things are coming out all because you're travelling with a gobby friend. Do you still think it's safer to travel with people than travel on your own? I mean, I've seen instances like that happen, you know. All it takes is one mouthy bastard and, you know, it plunges the whole lot of the group into a dangerous situation. I, you know, I've seen that happen. I've thought to myself, I feel far safer traveling on my own, really. So you may want to consider that. So, yes, I've traveled to many, many countries on my own and uh, never had a problem. And um, let's talk briefly about another, another advantage of travelling abroad. Let's mention a little bit about the armchair experts. Oh, they get on my nerves, those people. I mean, I knew a few armchair experts many, many year, years ago. Who you know you know what I'm talking about? People who sit in an armchair who've never ever been anywhere because they haven't got to get up and go, and yet they'll be able to tell you all about these countries across the world. How? Well, because my friend's cousin's brother-in-law has been there. Oh, you don't want to go there. That's dangerous, that is. I know someone's friend's cousin's brother-in-law. He went up the Amazon and got eaten by cannibals. I've heard all the stories. Listen, 99% of the horror stories, the danger stories, the BS stories comes from people who've never, ever been there. Now, I, I, I think there's absolutely no substitute for finding things out for yourself. It doesn't matter how many times or how many people tell you about a certain country. There is simply no substitute to finding things out for yourself. And I, 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 oh, I hate the armchair experts. They get on me bloody nerves, they do. 
I personally never ever talk about countries that I've never been to. I just don't. I might mention them, but I don't give people advice on places I've never been to. I do give advice on places that I have been to, but the armchair experts who've never been anywhere, they give advice on everywhere in the whole planet. There's nothing they don't know. So I never ever wanted to be like that, and that's one of the reasons that triggered me off to just, just get out there and go and book those tickets, start travelling, man. I mean, don't be like that sad bloody person who sits in an armchair and thinks he knows everything on the basis of me mate's friends, cousins, brother-in-laws, and auntie is being out there. I mean, you, you know, uh, don't listen to people like that. So like you say, I travel because I need to go to a country in order to be able to honestly say that I've been there and therefore I can tell you about it. There's no substitute to finding things out for yourself, no matter how many people tell you something. So, about the cost, is it cheaper to travel alone or more expensive? Well, that varies, doesn't it? Varies. I would say generally it's cheaper to travel alone because obviously, if you're going to travel alone, you've got to be a person who's on a who's, who's pretty disciplined with your money. I mean, um, the only thing that's more expensive, I would say, uh, traveling alone is hotels. If you're staying in a double room, you know, you've you, you've, got, you've got to be the one to pay that, whereas if you're traveling with someone else, you might be uh, sharing the cost. But um, it's, I think it's generally che cheaper to travel alone. And, you know, you know if, if, you're, if you say traveling with your missus or whatever, um, your missus may, you know, may be somebody good who wants to go halves with you. <laughs> but you might have the other type of missus who's, who likes, likes to go first class all the way. And... Um, she expects you to pay for it. So you've got to use your own judgment on that. I've traveled alone many, many years, and um, I, I, I've managed to keep my budget down. You know, not, not a problem, really. There's also something else I want to men mention about cost and, and people who you travel with. Okay, now you may be disciplined with money, but what happens if you, 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 you're traveling with friends who are not so disciplined with money, okay? I mean, they could be the type of people who squander their money and then uh, they need to borrow money five minutes later. Now, it's okay if you've got friends back home and you have nights out with these people who are the type of people who squander the money and then five minutes later they're tapping you for a lend of 20 quid. I mean, you know, that's bad enough. They're, they're a real pain, those kind of people. But can you imagine going on a holiday with those people? Can you imagine that? What happens if you, if you arrange to go on a, a, a three-week holiday uh, traveling somewhere in Thailand or whatever with a group of friends and it turns out that they're the type of people who squander their money? What happens then? Are they, are they going to blow their money in the first week or so and then they expect you, who's more disciplined with your money, to carry them for the rest of the journey? Well, to hell with that. I mean, I, 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 I fund my own travels. I'm not here to fund anybody else's. Um, now, if you want to know more about that, here we go. Here's, here's Eddie plugging his book again. Now, I've written a book which is on Amazon called Five Go to Pattaya. It's about five scousers, five five lads who go to Pattaya for a holiday. And this issue of how some people are realistic with money and some people who are totally unrealistic with money, I, I do make a big issue in the book about this. I mean, what happens? Some of the guys squander the money and then end up trying to bother from some of the other guys and they all fall out and have a big argument. This is, this is what happens. This is what happens. If ever you're going to agree to travel with other people, you make damn sure that they are the type of people who are disciplined with money because the last thing you want is to get halfway through your travel experience for them to, uh, to, to, you know, to start bloody sponging off you. You simply don't need that. You really, really don't need that. And uh, that's another reason that I travel alone. Now, what are the disadvantages of traveling alone? Okay, now, they are fairly obvious. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm a person, I'm, I'm comfortable with my own company. Not everybody is like that. Probably very, very few people could travel alone. Because you do get lonely sometimes. I mean, don't listen to those people who say, oh, it's okay traveling alone because you meet people, you meet other friends and all that. That, you know, that's not always the case. I mean, you, you maybe in some places, but there's other places where traveling alone, you will have very, very lonely uh, uh, patches where you don't really meet uh, that many other people. But um, 
was, I mean, somebody once mentioned to me, like, you know, they l love to go to the places that I go to, but this guy said to me, but I couldn't go, go there, mate, you see, because I, I have to have people with me. If I'm going to visit these famous sites, I can't appreciate that if I'm alone. I have to... I have to have somebody else with me to, to, to you know, to share in the wondrous, the wondrous moment of, of seeing this fantastic place uh, for, for real. And I get that. I understand that. I mean, I do understand that. But it, it has its ups and downs. I mean, I've, I've climbed Chichen Itza and I've, I've been at the Eiffel Tower and I've been Machu Picchu and the Christ. I've been a lot of these people, and it, it, I, I must admit, it would be great to be able to share that excitement, that adventure, with somebody else. But it's not all roses. Now, let me give you straight up a, uh, an example of that. I, um, I mentioned, did I mention the Christ in Rio? Yeah, I went to, the, went to see the Christ in Rio um, some years ago, 15 years ago, something like that. And... I was on a little mini bus that was picking picking me up from the hotel to take me to to, uh, to, to the entrance to the Christ the Redeemer, the, one of the world's great, one of the most famous images certainly in South America. And I was on this little mini bus, and there was only three passengers on there. One of them was me, and the other was an English couple, a really really uh, young, uh, well well dressed English couple. And um, as we were going towards uh, the Christ, you know, through the streets of Rio, this couple started arguing with each other. I mean, they were they, obviously they're having a bit of a, a you know a lovers' tiff or, or whatever, but they were bitching at each other. And the woman was, I seemed to recall, she was saying something to her fellow like, "Oh, I'm, oh, I'm turning this, turn this vehicle around. I've had enough of you. I, I'm, I regret coming. I wish I'd never come on holiday with you." And, and they, they, so there you go, three people in the time. I'm, I'm sitting there with, with the excitement. Of, of seeing the Christ in Rio, this couple here, they're together, but they're bitching like hell at each other, because that's what happens with some people on holiday. You spend more time arguing with each other. So, it has its ups and downs, doesn't it? Yeah, th th that guy who said to me, I need somebody to share in the excitement with me. Yeah, I get that. I do understand where he's coming from there. But it's not, not all roses. I mean, you could be someone, you could be with someone who's a real bloody stick in the mud, you know, so you may want to think about that. Also worth mentioning is what do people think of you? People back home in your own country, what do they think of you if you get into the habit of travelling alone? Well, to be honest with you, my feedback is really, really positive. I mean, I, I travel to a few European destinations, um, uh, and then I, I, my first visit to Thailand many, many years ago, I really hope that was the first long haul destination I've been to. I went and got back home. I was so thrilled, it was wonderful. And yeah, you know, I um, you know I got chatting to people. And do you know something? I met guys who were my age, around about you know 39, 40 at, at the time. And um, um, I met met guys, and every one of those guys admired me for travelling alone. Seri seriously. I mean, you know, when I told them about this country, I had a great time I'd had there, now I can't wait to go again. So many of these, these guys said to me, who did you go there with? I said, I went alone. I'm not going to be bothered waiting around for people. I went alone. And almost all the guys that I said that to said, my God, I wish I had the guts to do that. Seriously, seriously, yeah, you know, so... You know, travel alone. People, you know, most people will, will admire you for it, and that really, really is the, the, the way that it is. Of course, the downside of, of that is of traveling alone is that sometimes you will feel left out of things. I mean, I, as I've mentioned, I've seen many of the great sights of the world. Uh, you, you know, and you know, Iguazu waterfalls in Brazil and Argentina. Lots of great, great stuff. But there's certain things that I wanted to see, which I haven't felt that I could see alone. And quite often, this involves, you know, excursions involving getting a jeep, hiring a bus out in the countryside um, to see something. Usually, these are more geared up to groups of people. I mean, I remember I was in Bolivia in a, a town, which I can't remember the name of, um, uh, but it was close to the famous salt flats. You've seen the images of the salt flats in Bolivia and Chile. Well, I was in the Bolivian side of it, and I really, really wanted to see this. That's why I went to this town. And um, I, uh, 
I was about to book a tour, but I looked at the pictures, all the images in all the tour groups, and they were all images of young people who were acting the goat together. And it was, it was a, it, it's, it just seemed to me, it's the same with some of the excursions you do in Thailand. As soon as I see a tour group where it involves lots of young people, I mean, I'm going to feel really, really out of place then. I, I don't want to be going there alone. So... There are certain things that, you know, I, I've felt that I will just give a miss. I mean, if I'm going to see a famous, uh, you know, temple, you can do that alone because you don't need groups of people. If that, but if you're going to do other adventurous things, hiking and whatever, sometimes you will have to do that with a, in a group of uh, people. So, you know, that's where being alone does have a bit of an, uh, a disadvantage. So anyway, I've, uh, I've travelled to so many places over the last 25 years. I'm, I'm almost 62 now. Um, you, you know, and I don't regret any of that. I've had some wonderful, wonderful experiences. I really, really have. I don't regret travelling. Even some of the countries that haven't lived up, up to expectation, there's been a few of those. I still am glad that I went there because, like I said, you know, about the armchair experts, you know, you can't really comment on anywhere if you haven't been there. You need to go there personally. I've got absolutely no regrets with my travel, none whatsoever, absolutely none. And um, I've spent a lot of money over the years, but money well spent. I've, I've lived a colourful life over the last 25 years. Uh, you know, so what's the future? I'm almost 62 years uh, old now. I, well, at, six, at, at that age, I don't think I've really got that much of a future. I am travelling now at what I call a pedestrian pace. I'm not like a young backpacker or, you know, I can't do a lengthy bus journey and, uh, and then arrive in a place and then two days later do another lengthy bus. No, no, no none of that. Absolutely none of, none of that. I like to hang around in a certain place for a good length of time, you know, to get the feel of it. And as for lengthy bus journeys, I've done lots and lots of those in the past. Absolutely lots. I, you know, I don't like the idea of flying, you know, uh, domestic flights in countries because you're not really seeing much by doing that. I've done 18 hour, even 20 hour bus journeys through countries like Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, um, Ethiopia. So many, uh, so many lengthy overnight bus journeys. But I don't really want to want to do that again. I've done that. I, I, I don't want to do that again. Even though like some of the things that you encounter while you're traveling are really pretty wonderful. I, my, those days are old for me. At least I think they are. I mean, never say never. Never say never. You never know in a year's time. I might think, what the hell? What the hell? Why not give it one last go? Why not, why not go and do a round the world, you know, before you drop dead? You, you never know. But right now... I'm doing pedestrian travel. I'm more relaxed now. I think I, I haven't seen uh, 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 countries, not, not all the countries in the world, but I've seen all the ones that I always dreamed of, of, of going to. And I think that's just about enough for me. So listen, I hope I've given you a little bit of thought And anyway. If, if you're one of these people who, you know, is a little bit nervous about traveling alone, and not everyone could do it, and, you know, you think that you, you would get lonely and... And, and everything yeah you know i i, I re really I, I how can i put it think about it again you, you know plan it carefully because you know you may go to one country and you may just get get, get hooked, hooked on it traveling alone is you'd be surprised you'd be surprised how many people do travel alone i mean i've been i've, I've trekked in, uh, across a national park in costa rica and just about all the people I was going on the trek with, all of them were traveling alone. But like you say, there's a lot of things that you can't do alone as well. So anyway, I hope I've given you a little bit of uh, th something to think about here today. So listen, Songkran's coming up here in Thailand. I better get loads of plastic bags to cover my phone, or better still, leave it back home. Um, so thanks for watching anyway. Have a great day, a great evening, whatever you're doing, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.